Alright, welcome back guys. Um, this is right after the video with Junior. Been about five minutes or so. And I was kind of going around getting some stuff done. And I went back to the machine shop and I noticed something that had changed that wasn't in the change log so I thought I'd do this video to show you guys what it was and kind of show you what I do basically when I'm not recording um just because I don't want people to think that in Greg Tech you always where in the hell did I put there it is that when you play with Greg Tech, you always have, you know, something interesting to do. There is times like now where <clears throat> you really got to just kind of buckle down and get some work done, which is what I'm doing now. Um, made that sword and never even used it. Alright, let's switch this back. There we go. And we want it on about... I'm doing up a bunch of this pyrite. So, we don't want to go any... Well, let's go ahead and take it all the way up. Because I think I got most of it in there. I stick that to 10. Yes, I did. Right. Got power. Now, something else I'd like to tell you guys in case you uh, have the same problem with buildcraft pipes that we had. We had to use transfer nodes instead of buildcraft pipes. And I had these four over here, as you guys might remember. And it seemed like no matter how many connections that I had to this, whether it was one connection and four nodes going into it, or six or eight connections with four going into it, that at least two of these were getting overheated. I had to keep breaking out the burning box. Now, I've moved them over here, which is not very safe because if they overheat, they're going to blow this to smithereens, but I can put 16 coal dust in each one of these, light them up, and the transfer node never gets over like 2,000 millibuckets of steam, which tells me I might actually be able to do the steel ones that way. I haven't tried it yet, but... I think I might be able to. So if you guys end up having to use them, keep them as close to where they're going as possible. And that might help with how far they have to go. Searching that line might take time. I don't know what it is. But what I had found when I went to the machine shop was I had put one thing of um, sticky resin in my extractor and up until now every time I've done that I've gotten three rubber bars back well, this time when I did it, I got three rubber pulp back. And so I'm guessing that in the last update, he has made it to where we have to... I came down here to get wood, and I got all this wood on me. What a dumbass. Okay. He has put the 
old recipe back in for that where you have to get the pulp out of the extractor and then smelt it but if you smelt this pulp you get rubber nuggets not a rubber bar and you get like six nuggets so basically I'm going to show you guys what I got how I got this pulp and we're going to try to smelt it in our crucible because supposedly you can do that gimme and sorry for anybody that didn't like listening to me and Junior argue about that building but you know he's a teenager and you have those moments with teenagers especially where they think they're right and they think their parents are wrong and they're going to to disagree and in the five minutes that we've been gone the two of us have sat here and argued it out and that's the best way to do it you know don't you keep when dealing with kids i found you can't really be afraid to argue arguing is healthy as long as you teach them to argue properly and i don't mean not yelling because we yell a lot. You know, we are two testosterone testosterone driven men. And when we feel passionately about something, we yell. But we don't get in fights, you know, we don't physically fight. And we both know that we both have our limits, that there's a certain point that we have that we're going to get to and when we get to that point we really need to take a break and that's basically what you know happens if we end up agreeing or agreeing to disagree which we do have times that that's the case where you know he will not see my side of it. I will not see his side of it. We just agree, okay, this is one of those things that we're just not going to see eye to eye. We're not the same people. You know, you're not my clone. You're my son. You're going to see things differently than I do. As much as I may not like it at the time so we agree that you know this is a, a subject that you know we're just going to disagree on and as long as it's not something that is going to be a detriment to one of our hells or the health of somebody else on the planet there's no reason to make it a big deal you know like this you know we were arguing over you know the design and the fact that there's a hole in the floor and he can't stand it that there has to be a hole in the floor now I don't like it that it has to be there but for the design to work it has to be there and it's just the way it is and truthfully the reason why this building was designed was because Webb likes doing redstone stuff and he junior likes to build buildings and so I sat around one day and I thought you know what kind of project can I come up with that'll give these guys something to do you know I'm on a multiplayer server it'll be nice to you know involve more than one person in a project you know, and it'll be nice to do something that's just not me sitting here playing with machines. 
You see, now we got Rover Paul. And so I came up with this project because I knew that either this building would have to be expanded or a new building would have to be built to contain it. And unfortunately for me, it ended up causing, you know, a discussion between the two of us. But I do believe that, you know, what came out of the discussion by the time we were done was a good thing because I got to to voice some of my opinions and concerns about things and he got to voice some of his and they were things that you know neither one of us really thought about saying to the other one and so this gave us an opportunity to say it um so you know I think it was good that we have it. I don't dislike arguments. I actually enjoy arguments. As long as they're fruitful arguments and intelligent arguments. As long as the argument is going to result in a change or an agreement or an understanding between two people, the argument to me is justified now if it's just two people fighting and arguing with each other and yelling and screaming at each other and when they leave the the argument they're still hating each other and and not wanting to talk to each other not wanting to be around each other you know whatever the case may be well that's not a fruitful argument you guys came into it disagreeing on something and you left disagreeing on something and all you did while you were there was, you know, throw slurs back at each other, back and forth at each other. And I don't do that, you know. And I don't allow Junior to do that. If he has a legitimate beef about something, well, give me your legitimate beef. Tell me. Hold on a second. <coughs> Sorry about that. Tell me what it is that, that your problem is. Give me the meat and potatoes of the problem. And we'll work it out. And, you know, if I can understand what it is that your beef is, then I will do what I can to change it. And I will tell you my meat and potatoes of it. And do the absolute best I can to get you to understand it. Now, granted, he's a teenager and he's hard-headed. You know, we we come from a long line of hard-headed people. So it takes a lot to, to get him there. But that's where being a parent, you got to have patience, you know. I'd hate to see the two of us argue when I was a teenager and him as a teenager. Because the two of us would probably end up getting into a fist fight. Because I'd get frustrated, he'd get frustrated, and finally the two of us would just, you know, start punching. But me being the parent, I have to, you know, take control of the situation and say, okay, now, hold on. Sit down and look at this rationally. Think about, you know, what it is that's giving you this feeling. What it is that's making you this mad? Is it exactly what you're saying, or is there another underlying thing that's that's adding to this frustration? And for him, it's that, you know, we don't do a whole lot other than stuff right around here. And so we're going to have like an, a couple adventure episodes where we're just going to go out wandering. One of the biggest problems we have on this server that we have on every server is we can never find a jungle. And so we're going to go look for one and it may take one episode. It may take six episodes, but we're going to go look for one. 
and that'll give us time to derp around, falling off cliffs, and and joking around, and and killing things, and you know, having an adventure. Hopefully, you guys will like it. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy it. There'll be a whole lot less Greg Tech in it, but there'll be a whole lot of us. And hopefully, you're watching these videos for more than just the Greg Tech. You enjoy watching them for us. Um, so, for the next few episodes, that's probably what it's going to be. Um, we do not have teleporting <clears throat> on the server. So, it's not like I can teleport from wherever we are back to here, give you guys a video of me doing this kind of thing, and then teleport back out there. You know, if we end the video way the hell out there, we're going to start the next video way the hell out there. So, anyways, I think I got all that out of my system. Let's get back to this rubber. We've got rubber pulp which melts at 410 boils at 820 so that is pretty small amount of heat I better tell him I'm on here mm -hmm. recording yeah, so yeah no. <clears throat> uh, da -da -da -da. Don't want anybody saying anything they don't want the whole world to know. All right, we got our iron out here. I'm going to go ahead and make it into ingots. Oh, that one piece fell in. I still had it sitting there. Okay. Well, we're going to look for where I put... Oh, it's back... Where did I put them? No idea. Anyways, let's get this iron out of here. Now, we can't throw this pyrite in there because it'll burn up at 1520. So, we're going to have to turn this bad boy off. And we'll tell it to tell us when it's down to 1520. Trying to find my other burning box so we can go put it under that other crucible and just give it a little bit of heat. I'm trying to think of where I put it. Maybe I'll put it over here. I've got to get all my signs up. I got signs that. I usually put up the tells me what everything is and why it is where it is I haven't got that done yet there they are alright take this one Actually, you know what? This one will do up to 1250. I made it for testing the other day. Might as well use it. 
I'm gonna set this bad boy right here. And one piece of lignite, stick that in there. <coughs> And we're going to throw just one. Well, let's do three. And we're going to need this. Put it right there. All right. Light the fire. And there we go. Now. We got one. And it just burn up. I think this melts pretty quick. No, maybe not. Let's get this out of here before it burns the place up. I'll knock the heat off of it. So, three gave us one. So, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put nine in there and get another piece of lignite and we'll fire that and we'll see okay there's one two three and it burn up again Okay, so we're at least getting a third out of each one. And she definitely want to do a whole bunch of it at a time and not give it a lot of heat. Woo! Good thing this stuff is renewable. Alright, let's put our pie right in here. There we go. And I think the power's still on, right? There we go. Power back on now. This thing should have cooled off. See how much this we can get in here. Alright. Now, that looked like it had a bunch of heat. So let's actually see if we can do this. I've never tried it. And we can. We'll just put half of it in there. Wow. That ate up a bunch of it. So we're definitely not getting one for one. That's for sure. I think we had 29. We got 17 or 39, and there's still some in here. One little piece. So, yeah, rubber's going to be a little bit more expensive, but rubber's actually pretty freaking cheap right now. You know, you can get three out of one, and it's uh, 
basically completely renewable. If you play with the IHL mod, you can even get it automated. So I don't have any problem with it. And like I said, you can actually, um, let me look this up here. If you don't want to smelt it, which I will, you can actually cook it into rubber chips and put the rubber chips into a rubber bar that way. So, it's up to you which way you want to do it. I'll do it this way because I like using the crucible. But I know some people would much rather just throw it in a furnace. Something they can automate a little bit easier. Something they're more used to. Man, it is going to take me forever to get through all this copper. Might actually make our medium voltage heater before I go through all that. This is a nice way to get iron and copper going through all this chalcopyrite, chalcopyrite, however you want to say it. And this stuff makes really good roads. That's what all our roads is, is the stone dust. It's nice to actually have a use for this crap. Greg Tech 5, we had like no use for it. So I actually like the fact that we have some kind of use for it. Because gravel you can always break down into sand and attempt to get diamonds out of it with a... Oh, crap. The railcraft thing. Rock crusher. Um, which, don't think because it says less than 1% that it's going to be anywhere close to 1%. Because it's nowhere near 1%. You will get a little bit of gold out of it, but I've done up probably 6, 8, maybe even 10 stacks of gravel and still haven't gotten one diamond out yet. But I'd never messed with it before, so I figured I'd play around with it and see what I got. The main nice thing about it is just being able to get rid of these and get most of what you put into it back out of it. That's why I have these three sitting here because once I get it set back up, that's what I'm going to do. And I talked to Junior and Webb, and we're going to dismantle this thing. We're going to knock it down to one, maybe two dispensers, because I don't know if it's the server. Um, Axel says it has to do with the client and the, the server, if there's a, a lag for a tick. He says we're actually getting a duping glitch, which is what that thing in the changelog was supposed to be about about dead stacks that was supposed to be to take care of the duping glitch where you were getting extra out now I've never counted what I put in there so I have no idea if I'm actually duplicating but I do know that I'm getting stuff that isn't washed whether it's a duplication or it's uh just not getting processed it drives me nuts so I'm gonna go down to two and see how that works and it sounds like I'm starting to get the hiccups 
and that's going to suck for a video. So I'm probably going to end this since we're at exactly a half hour. And I basically wanted to show what I wanted to show. Um, in case anybody wonders, I do have two electric heaters, low voltage here. So I'm putting 64 EU a tick into this. So I'm getting like 16, so 32 heat in here at a time. You can put these all around it, under it, all around it. But you still got to have somewhere for your mold. So I usually just run two. And like I said, we're going to make a medium voltage probably next time we're actually here working. And this is what we're going to be making. So we're going to have to make some copper nickel rods and some double aluminum. I might even take you guys out and go do some aluminum mining over there. But until next time... Take it easy, guys.